In this video, I'm going to cover Gibbs free energy and the equilibrium constant. So Gibbs free energy, delta G, tells us which direction a reaction is spontaneous. So remember that if the value of delta G is negative, that tells us that the reaction is spontaneous in the forward direction. And if the value of delta G is positive, that tells us that a reaction is spontaneous in the reverse, to rea in the re reverse direction. So um, delta G kind of tells us, the value of delta G tells us which direction we can expect a reaction to go. Is it going to go forwards or backwards? Well, remember when we were talking about equilibrium, we could come to the same conclusion if we compared the values of Q and K. So remember Q is the reaction quotient, and it has the same uh, mathematical form of K. It's just products over reactants. And the only difference between Q and K is that if I'm not at equilibrium, and I plug my non-equilibrium concentrations into the reaction quotient, um, products over reactants, then I'm, what I'm computing is Q. But if I put my equilibrium concentrations into the same exact um, equation, then what I'm computing is K. So again, the only difference between Q and K is whether I'm at equilibrium, in which case the value is K, and if I'm not at equilibrium, the value is Q. So if we compare Q and K, that tells us which direction the reaction is going to go. Remember, if Q equals K, that means the reaction is at equilibrium, and it's not going to go forwards or backwards. The reaction has effectively stopped. The, the concentrations have stopped changing at equilibrium. If Q is smaller than K, then the reaction goes forward and, until Q gets bigger, and eventually Q will equal K, and the reaction will be at equilibrium. And if Q is larger than K, then the reaction goes backwards, and Q will get smaller and smaller until the Q equals K, and we're at equilibrium. So delta G tells us which direction a reaction goes. Comparing Q and K, the equilibrium constant tells us which, re which direction a reaction will go. So G and K are kind of giving us the same information, so they're related. And in fact, they're related according to this equation. Delta G, the Gibbs free energy, is equal to the uh, negative of the gas constant times the temperature times the natural log of K. So the gas constant is a constant, obviously. The temperature is variable. And the equilibrium constant is also a constant. So this equation here tells us that um, delta G, the amount of energy, the amount of free energy in a reaction that's available to do work, is a function of the equilibrium constant itself. Is the equilibrium constant large? Is the equilibrium constant small? That tells us how far a reaction is going to proceed. Is it going to go from 0% um, products to 100% products? Or if K is smaller, maybe it's only going to go from 0% products at the beginning of the reaction. And then when the reaction's done, maybe I only have 15% products. And I have 85% reactants if I have a small K. So um, a reaction moving forward to a large extent, meaning having a large K, is going to give us a large negative value of delta G, which is going to be, it equates to a lot of energy, a lot of free energy available to do work. So here's a way that we can represent that graphically. So in this case, um, here is my equilibrium position. Remember that um, a ball is always going to roll downhill, right? So if we look at this uh, representation here, what it's saying is that if I'm if I'm at equilibrium, then the concentration stop changing. This reaction does not the, the amount of liquid and gas stops changing. Remember, it's tricky to say because at equilibrium, the reaction hasn't actually stopped. The concentrations just stop changing. So what that means is that here, the reaction stopped changing. But if I'm at any position besides here, the reaction will change until it gets back here. right? So here's my um, liquid going to gas, the uh, pressure of the vapor pressure of water. right? So if I have Q equals 0, Let's make our equilibrium constant, our equilibrium expression for this reaction here. Remember that pure liquids are left out, and K equals products over 
reactants. And my product is H2O gas. And my reactant is a liquid, so it does not figure into the equation. So KEQ for this entire equation is just the concentration of gas. Right? So if, uh, and this is also equal to Q. Remember, it also equals Q. The same form. The only difference is, is this equilibrium concentration, in which case the value I've computed is K, or is this concentration not at equilibrium, in which case the value I've computed is Q. So when Q is zero, that means the concentration of gas is at zero. So that means that uh, I have 100% liquid. I'm all the way over on this side of the reaction, and there's no gas. If I start with 100% H2O liquid and I have no H2O gas, what's going to happen? Well, this equilibrium tells me that the liquid is going to evaporate and I'm going to make some gas. And eventually the gas is going to condense and it's going to turn back into liquid and we'll have this equilibrium going back and forth. So I start here with 100% liquid and no gas. As the reaction moves forward, I create some gas and then finally I reach equilibrium, at which point I have 0.0. 313 atmospheres of gas, and the rest is liquid. Conversely, if I start with Q equals 1, and if Q equals 1, that means I have 100% of my gas, or one atmosphere of gas, and I have uh, the amount of liquid, I suppose, is inconsequential because it doesn't appear in the equilibrium expression. But I will have, regardless, one uh, atmosphere of gas. In that case, if I have one atmosphere of gas, my ball's over here. I have too much gas, the gas is going to condense, 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 until we finally get to equilibrium, at which point Q equals K, and the reaction stops moving. So this is K right here, right? K is at the bottom where the reaction stops moving, that's equilibrium. So up here, this is Q equals 0, and up here this is Q equals 1, and when I'm at equilibrium, Q equals K, the reaction stops. So when Q is less than K, the reaction moves forward until it reaches equilibrium and stops. When Q is greater than K, the reaction moves backwards until we, each, we reach equilibrium and the reaction stops. And so we can talk about this in terms of Q and K, or we can talk about this in terms of delta G. When I'm up here, my delta G is negative uh, because of the concentrations of my reactants and products, in which case I'm going to move forward until I use up all that free energy, right? Delta G is negative. Let's say I have negative 100 joules. And then here I have, make a dot. And here I have negative 50 joules. And then down here at equilibrium, I have zero joules. There's no more energy left. I'm at equilibrium, the reaction has stopped. Up here, uh, Q is 100 joules positive. So if it's positive 100 joules, then the reaction is going to move backwards, right? So when I'm looking at this reaction, it goes forwards when delta G is negative, or it goes backwards when delta G is positive, right? And then I would have down here plus 50 joules until we get down to the bottom again, zero joules. So Q and K or delta G telling us the same thing, which direction the reaction is going to move. So here is kind of a, a summary. When Q is less than K, the reaction moves forward. That's the same as saying that delta G is negative. When Q is greater than K, the reaction moves backwards, and that's the same as saying that delta G is positive. When Q equals K, the reaction doesn't move at all because we're at equilibrium, and that's the same as saying that the free energy is equal to zero. Okay, so um, what happens when we're not at standard conditions? Because generally we talk, we've been talking about um, delta G naught, and delta G naught always assumes that we have some set of standard conditions, which is that um, my reactants and products are in their standard state, the concentrations are equal to one molar, um, pressures are equal to one atmosphere, the temperature is generally equal to 25 degrees C. So if all of those conditions are true, then I have what I've computed is delta G naught. But sometimes 
those conditions aren't true. Maybe it's a little bit colder, it's 20 degrees C. Or maybe it's a little bit warmer, it's 30 degrees C. If I'm performing a reaction not at 25 degrees C, then delta G naught is not the value that I'm going to see because the temperature will be different. Or if I'm at more or less than one atmosphere, or more or less than one molar of a concentration for my solutions. So in those cases, delta G naught isn't useless. We can still get useful information out of it, but it doesn't tell us the right number because the, all of those conditions haven't been met. So here's some ways that we can see uh, how um, an equilibrium constant is going to affect um, uh, delta G when we're not at standard conditions, which really is anywhere on this uh, uh, curve here that's not right here in the middle. Because remember that when we're talking about, um, for example, this reaction, a gas going to a gas, K is going to be equal to this divided by this. So when K is equal to 1, that means I have 50-50, right? 50% A, 50% B, K equals 1. Um, products over reactants. In that case, here's my Q. Q is always equal to 1 because when I uh, am calculating Q, oops, oops, when I'm calculating Q for standard conditions and I have the products, concentration of products over reactants, If we're at standard conditions, standard conditions means that the concentration of products is one molar, right? Because the concentration of everything is one molar. Therefore, the concentration of reactants is one molar. Therefore, Q is equal to one. And it doesn't matter if I have these squared, or this times something else, or this times something else, if everything is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, then Q is always 1. So under standard conditions, Q is always equal to 1, because we've defined it that way. We've said it's always equal to 1 molar. So that's always going to be halfway in between. So if K also equals 1, because Q, Q always equals 1, if k also happens to equal 1, which generally, remember, is pretty unusual. Usually I don't have 50% products and 50% reactants. Usually it's some different ratio, not exactly 50-50. But if it happened to be so, that k equals 1, then this is what my curve would look like. I would have my standard, um, the sta under standard conditions, this would be uh, q equal to 1. And if k were also equal to 1, then that would mean that my uh, Delta G naught is equal to zero. Delta G naught equals zero. Because remember, delta G naught is computed under uh, non-standard condition or under standard conditions. And if K equals one, then delta G naught equals negative R T L N K. The natural log of one is zero. So 0 times RT is 0, so delta G naught equals 0. So if K equals 1, then delta G naught equals 0. But that doesn't mean that I can't ever get any free work out of this reaction, because look at my curve. It means that if I am over here with pure reactants, 100% reactants, then I'll have a negative delta G until it won't be delta G naught, but it will be delta G under non-standard conditions. And I'll have 100% products, 75% uh, products, and 50%. So then I get to 50-50, k equals 1, I'm at equilibrium, the reaction stops. So equilibrium just describes the bottom point of the curve. If k equals 1, the, curve, the bottom point of the curve is right in the middle. If k is less than 1, the bottom point of the curve is over here, which is to say that k is less than 1, so that favors products. Or excuse me, that favors reactants. When K is less than 1, that favors reactants. And again, just remember why. Because if I have a large amount of reactants, then what's a small number divided by a large number? It's a small number. If I have a large number of products, then what's a large number divided by a small number? 
it's a large number. So if k is small, that means reactants are big. If k is large, that means the products are big. So here, k is small, means it favors reactants. If it favors reactants, that means that here's 50-50, 50%. That means this is 75% reactant. And here's 25% reactant. This reaction reaches equilibrium even before I get to 50-50. So the, then delta G is going to be negative. Or rather, delta, in this case, delta G naught, if this is Q, right? And I put my ball right here at Q, which is equal to 1, which is delta G under standard conditions. Which way is it going to go? It's going to go this way. It's going to go backwards. Therefore, delta G must be positive. So when K is small, delta G is positive. But what about this? When K is large, then I have right 100% reactant, 75% reactant, 50% reactant right here at Q equals 1, and 25% reactant. Then what happens if I start my ball right here at Q equals 1? Which direction is it going to go? Forwards, down the hill, until it reaches equilibrium. Therefore, delta G naught equals negative. So these, this is a good way to think about what's going to happen if I start a reaction with pure reactants, or if I start a reaction with pure products. How could I get more energy out of this reaction? If I have this reaction, A gas going to B gas, and I'm trying to use it to get some free energy to do some work, what should I do? Should I start with 100% reactants and make the reaction go forward? Or should I start with 100% products and make the reaction go backwards? Well, look, you're going to get a far greater move this way. So if I'm trying to maximize my free energy, then I should start with 100% products. Over here, because the ball has further to roll in, in this, in, if a reaction has a K that's smaller than 1. And, by, and conversely for this one. If K is bigger than 1, then I should start with a reaction that has 100% reactants, because it will have to move further before it gets to equilibrium. I'll get more free energy out of it. So because delta G of reaction equals 0 at equilibrium, uh, then we know that delta G naught equals negative RT ln K. So again, when K is less than 1, delta G is positive, spontaneous in the reverse direction. K is greater than 1, delta G is negative, spontaneous in the forward direction. And when K equals 1, delta G is 0. And the reaction is at equilibrium under standard conditions. But again, this is fairly atypical. So again, if we are not at standard conditions, then we are not computing delta G naught. We're computing something very similar that's called delta G. Delta, this little degree symbol only applies if I have one atmosphere, one molar, it's 25 degrees C, and everything's in its standard state. If, if one of those is not true, I'm actually computing this value. But these values are obviously related to each other. How are they related? Well, delta G under non-standard conditions equals delta G under standard conditions plus R, T, L, N, Q. So again, the only thing that's different about non-standard conditions is that the temperature might change. I might be at, not at 25 degrees C. Or the concentrations might change. I might not be at one atmosphere. I might not be at one molar. So those are the two things that I can change that would change the value of delta G if it's not at standard conditions. So what happens, oops, what happens if I am at standard conditions? What's the value of this, rea of this equation right here when I'm at standard condition? Well, remember standard conditions has Q equal to 1. If Q equals 1, then the natural log of 1 equals 0. 0 times RT equals 0. So if we're at standard conditions, at standard conditions, then delta G equals delta G naught, which totally makes sense. What is delta G naught? Well, this is the value of the free energy when we're at standard conditions. So if we're not at standard conditions, here's the equation. But what happens when we plug in the, the standard conditions to this equation? 
Well, it just tells us, oh, well, then delta G equals delta G naught because we're at standard conditions. So if Q is not equal to 1, which is any situation where we don't have one molar for reactants and products or one atmosphere for reactants and products, then I use this equation to compute what delta G would, would be. And we can see that it's, we start at delta G naught under standard conditions, and then I add a little bit more. Or if Q is a small number, I subtract a little bit more. So delta G will be just about the same size as delta G naught, but a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, depending on the values of T and Q. So again, at equilibrium, when delta G equals 0, then this would be 0, and this equation would collapse to delta G naught equals negative RT ln K, because Q equals K when I'm at equilibrium. So um, using these equations, delta G equals negative R T L N K and delta G equals delta G naught plus R T L N Q. We can use these two equations to find the value of the equilibrium constant or the value of delta G at any temperature and concentration.